now this when these states come in handy like remember what i showed you here up so i use this to guide my icon to see whether my icon can execute all states without without like tearing apart so step one is like just the stroke as i explained earlier what's up guys um my name is Bozana and uh in this video, I want to show you my approach when it comes to icon design. You know, iconography is one of like the most intuitive tool of design that can help you digest too much information in one like visual form or shape that can really carry on the message easily and simple. Um, for the previous months, I've been working on this project with uh, with a team of uh, about like five people, and we've been like designing and developing this e-commerce platform and uh, my role on it i'm the ui ux designer and uh, um i've been tasked to figure out like best ways of like making this user interface easy for users to interact with it and, and like you know perform the tasks they want to perform on the platform and uh, yeah so developing a unique visual language is one of the things that i've been also like putting in in consideration and uh, when it comes to like you know cutting on text and making sure that the information is little Icons is the way to go, like designing icons help you cut out too much text and uh, that's what I've been doing for the past couple of days. You might ask me why I design custom icons when there are tens of libraries online. I would say um, if you really want to custom design something that fits a brand or client you're working for, you need to use these libraries as just point of reference but then you customize them to fit your need. Um, so starting to design these icons, what I always want to do first is like sketching. But even before that, I always make sure that I do some research and see what's out there, what other people have already created. So I think I use that as my point of reference uh, when I'm sketching my ideas. So uh, let's just dive into the sketching. And then after we import all our sketches into Figma, and then we start laying the line work. So before we jump into sketching, I want to give you a bit of my workflow to share an idea um, of how I go by my design projects. I usually have like a process that I put in place to help me guide uh, my thoughts through the entire project because you might get lost on the way. So, um, so first thing first, I always like love to research and, and try to look around on the internet to see what other designers have created so far. So you really don't want to reinvent the wheel the idea is just to see what other people have created and then like jump jump start your mind from there so uh as you can see here i already like went ahead to create a list of icons that i want to design um and uh so what you see on the right here is more like um a mood board i've put together of icons just to gather like you know to look at them on one slate and see what's the common language that designers enjoy to use when it comes to like iconography and they have like a common design style which is like line iconography so that's what i'm trying to achieve with this project that's 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 something like i want to design for these icons so uh basically that's it because you know it's about like just getting out of your head and and put everything that you you feel like you you vision to have like on paper because it's it's not like there's no right way of sketching these uh, if you really have like a general feel of like how the standard um like you know rocket looks so you you really don't need to stress it much um Yeah, so I think I'm done with the sketching. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, for, from here now, what I'm just going to do is like take a picture of my uh, designs. Then after I import them in Figma and I start like uh, laying the line work. So uh, basically that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this sketching phase. But ideally, I don't want to like waste all my time on this. I feel like my ideas already on paper. And the next thing is to just uh, go ahead like and import them. So yeah, I think that's it for now and uh already imported my sketches in figma and ready to go uh, just to give you like a quick light on what's going on here so what you see on the top here it's me just anticipating states of this icon um for example like uh like the black stroke it could be before it's clicked like the default um state 
and maybe looking at this it could be maybe on hover or hover whatever you call it uh, so it could be this right um uh, maybe it's uh, now selected it could be uh, this yellow or it could be this or, or the black one so i think if you if you get the idea then i'll just go ahead and start uh doing my line work so i really don't talk much when i'm like trying to focus into or zoning into like creating i like any design actually i don't know how this would go though so if you feel like i'm so silent you can just drop in a comment <laughs> i don't know okay that won't tell but ideally yeah so i'll just uh, zoom in and let me first put on my grid um just go ahead and put on my grid so i'm using an eight pixel grid I don't know why I like that one better and uh, so the frame I'm using it's uh, it's 104 uh, let me see let me select it for you it's a 104 by 104 yeah it works best I'll just go ahead and start with the rocket so I'll just quick one I'll just go analyze how the rocket looks and um, and yeah I think start doing it <clears throat> So looking at this rocket and this one, actually even this one looks dope, and also this one looks dope. So I think I'll try first sketch out this um, and see how that happens. So usually when I'm doing any design, I love to think about, so yeah, tip here. So, um, so when you look at this, usually when I'm designing, I always like want to break down my, oh, my sketches into shapes. Because the default or the standard shapes of any uh, vector software, I think, um, are close to a rectangle or square, then a line, ellipse, an ellipse or whatever it is, and then a polygon. You need to figure out a way how these shapes can help you uh, execute your design. So I think uh, we'll start with the rectangle and see how that really goes. But uh, yeah so when i look let me see yeah i'll start with the rectangle and see how best to put my uh i think i'll just do it on the side here um so imagine this is the rectangle and then uh we just give it maybe some more always like try to align it to the grid remember like all the imperfections might come along yeah, so you see now what's going on. Like I might end up putting on my, uh, um, uh, it's called the grid. So let me just go put on the grid, the pixel grid. It actually does help. So the pixel grid is on. You can see it's snapping to points. Um, let me just copy this and go work work on the on the frame yeah so let me use the frame to align these and we'll see how that, that really uh, i think this is the center so one two three four five six seven eight so this somewhere here is the center of this frame mm, even i'll move this so yeah, as you can see, I've already like started moving around with my shape. So I'll pull this one down a little bit and uh, maybe pull this one up a little bit more, almost close to the, the frame. And uh, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll bring this one to the bottom a little bit and then drag it in there. Same. Uh, yeah, so so far you can see it taking shape it's funny how like you can really design uh, from you know when actually it's really fun when you start designing with shapes So now I think I'll just insert in the wings for now. Good wings, right? I don't know. I still I'll grab the rectangle. Uh, try keep it around maybe. Okay, let me start. 
that we missed in cell that goes so I'll just uh, move it to the center there and then uh, So yeah, now this when these states come in handy, like remember what I showed you here up? So I use this to guide my icon to see whether my icon can execute all states without without like tearing apart. So step one is like just the stroke as I explained earlier. So I'll just go try all the states and see whether my icon can keep up. So if it can't, you really don't want to uh, tear it apart or you, you don't want to throw it away. You can just make tweaks and see how it can like really stay consistent throughout all the states. Um, when it comes to this kind of box, I feel like a square would do. Uh, but I want to go ahead with a rectangle box because I feel like squares have been overdone and uh, been exploited so much, man. Like, so I'll try go with uh, with more like a rectangle, but a square would be geometrically right since our frame is a square. But again, like I feel like I want a rectangle. It depends on your preference, though. So if you feel like you want what you want you should want it and uh, don't let anyone get in your way so So yeah, thank you guys for sticking around. The main goal for this video was to give you a quick intro to Figma in terms of how you can use it to design your own icons. It's an intuitive tool 
consider checking it out and so far how we uh, kind of like phase this video <clears throat> I shared a little bit of my sketching phase I shared my research phase and then I just did all these icons in front of you guys and I feel like it's kind of weird how this tool can design this amazing uh, iconography and I feel like I'm so fluent when it comes to Illustrator and I'm still like so naive and nervous when I'm using this tool. So there's a learning curve but also it's not so stiff but if you're just transitioning from Illustrator straight to this tool it will look so intimidating because it kind of like have some different languages when it comes to their vector work. Um, something that doesn't happen in Illustrator here you can do it. So um, yeah. I'll post this on my Instagram. You can check me out at, uh, at WXYZANA or POZANA if you really want to check out my Instagram. So yeah, that, that has been it, guys. If you feel like you want to add something or if you have a comment about these icons or you want to share something with the rest of the community, just go ahead. Other than that, consider subscribing because honestly, right now I have like around 100 something subscribers. And I want by the end of this year to have a thousand, which I don't know whether that means uh, by next uh, month I should be close to something like 900 because if now it's November, yeah, it's kind of like too ambitious. But ideally, if you can like just throw out the word and let other people know that this guy is creating these amazing kind of videos for them to come and watch and subscribe, uh, you can smash that like button if you if you're into that kind of thing <laughs> but yeah other than that thank you guys for watching i'll catch you in the next one